Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to show you guys my updates to the grid building plugin. So this is for version 2.1, where I've added the ability to use the grid building plugin with side-scroller or Metroidvania type games. So one of the key differences between using the tile map grid for a top-down game and for a side-scrolling game is that the ground is not the tile where you're trying to place onto, but the ground is, in this case actually, uh, the tile under it. And not every single tile in your game you would want to be considered to be a ground tile or a placeable ground tile rather. And you might also want to differentiate wall tiles that would be on your left or your right and ceiling tiles. So I don't know, maybe have like a spike on the ceiling, something like that. So for handling all of that, I added a new rule. So if I look at the placeable in this setup for a shop oak wards, like you see right there, then in the rule, we have raw existing side scrolling ground, which is really just a saved version of new valid placement tile rule. So when you want to check the tiles in a certain area that they have a custom data set to the desired value, then that would be when you use this rule, valid placement tile rule. So if you want to check if the ground under you is set buildable to true, you can do that with this rule. So if I hide the tile map for a second, you'll see that there's actually a little bit of a collision shape or really an area right under the shop. So this is the area we're using for checking for valid placeable tile rule. So if I expand this rule, we jump into the tile indicator scene and I've made some updates here as well. So here we can check if a tile is invalid and we can add the custom data that we want to be set for this tile to not be considered invalid. So by default, you wouldn't require this if you're just checking for standard collisions and you don't need it uh, for the checking if the tile is off the map, uh, off the buildable map rules. But this is an extra requirement you can add. So in these dictionaries, you can add the new key which is going to be the string name of the custom data you're setting on the tile map. And then the new value is whatever you want that set to. So a standard way of doing it is just going to be a Boolean buildable set to on or true, but you can actually use pretty much any value you want. So the reason I set it up like that is that the custom data on tile maps can also be basically anything you want. So if we actually take a look at uh, the woods level, the tile map, and we jump into the tile set here, then you'll come down to custom data layers. That's where you add the custom data. So you can add a buildable as a Boolean, but you can see from this drop down that basically anything you can put in a dictionary can also be used here. So if you wanted to match a custom data layer on something like color or string name, you could do that as well. And it would also be possible to have multiple includes. So this is a dictionary, so you can just add multiple key value pairs if you want to check multiple things like maybe buildable and used if you're going to mark tiles already used after a building has been placed. However, I found that having the used property is actually unnecessary uh, because when you place your objects into the scene on a custom mask layer, such as I'm using buildable tiles as my number 11 layer, then as long as the objects you place into the scene, let's jump over to the scene here, and then we have a ground placement check as long as these objects have that same layer, then they're going to cause a collision for that tile collision indicator. So you might think, oh, but what if your tile collision indicator just wants to check ground? Well, that's why I've separated it so that different rules will uh, use different tile indicator templates. So if we go back to the main gameplay scene, and I know I'm jumping around a bit here, then on building system in the placement validator, where we have our base rules, you can see that you can set up your standard uh, tile collision indicator here. So in this case, that is the one where I'm checking the placeable area and making sure that there's no collisions whatsoever on, um, I believe it's just the ground layer one. But then down here, I'm using that separate tile collision indicator template that's specifically checking, once again, if the these tiles are marked buildable. So we can only place the shop if there's no collisions in this placement zone and if the area beneath it is all marked as ground. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit play, jump into the scene, and I'm gonna select my buildable from the menu. So you'll notice two things here. One, I played around with the colors a little bit on the buildable uh, tiles, the ones underneath that need to match a buildable zone. So you'll see that these tiles, although they are tiles, are not buildable, but these ones on top are. And then for the tile collision indicators on top where the shop is, 
I hid all of those simply to make it cleaner. So let's place this shop into the area. Uh, now, one thing you might want to do for a side scroller is to make sure that your other characters are on a separate layer than your build layer, because uh, you might want to be able to place a shop even when the character is right on top here. Since really, if you're thinking about it, the shop would be slightly into the background and then the character would be up front. So being able to place an object right behind the character would make sense for uh, the style of game. And you'll see that uh, wherever there is a shop that already has the buildable tiles used, that there's a collision on that layer. Since that's all happening on layer 11, those collisions are detected. But if I move up a little bit, there would not be collisions detected here because we're just checking layer 11 to see if uh, the buildable tile has been used and if there's no collision on that layer. Okay, now to show that the collision rule is still in play for the above shop area, if I press enter here to try building, uh, you'll see it says failed due to placement collisions. But you can see, of course, there's no collision on the bottom visible indicators. That's actually just happening on the invisible ones. Um, so that's still there, even though they're hidden, they're still doing the shape casts and all of that. And then, of course, because the bottom tiles are pink, we don't have buildable tiles. But if I go down here, then that would change into a placement collision instead of uh, the tiles actually being missing there. So that's uh, two rules validating, and then we get the results spit out there to the build log down below. So really quickly, if you didn't want your uh, hero and your enemies to um, show up as collisions with the build system, then just put them on a different layer. So here you can see I have layer three as the enemy layer, and for the hero over here, we have uh, the player layer being layer two. So if your indicators are looking for layer one, they're not going to be considered to be colliding with uh, layer two and layer three. And just whenever you want the tile indicators to be created, just make sure that the mask on your indicator matches the actual collision object layers inside of your build scene. So uh, back in the build scene, of course, the shop Oak Woods, we can see layer one here. Uh, that would be for the main collision. And then uh, the placement area, which is the areas where I want to take up space, but not necessarily actual physical in-game collision. So that's on layer 10 here. So the players don't look at layer 10, so they won't collide with this placement area. Um, and then the ground placement check down here, I'm using layer 11. And you can use whatever layers you want. Just make sure that you separate things out so that your objects interact with the things they should and not the things they shouldn't is basically the general rule here. So really quickly before we wrap this video up, one of the main changes was creating separate indicators for different rules. So here I have the base indicator. Um, you can see that this is only checking for collisions. It doesn't check for any invalid tiles. And, and that I have this show indicators property turned off. So if show indicators is off, then when they get created, these sprites are not going to be visible. The shape cast is still going to be there and it will still make the physics checks, but they won't be visible, which can make it a little bit cleaner to see in game. And then the ground check indicator, we can see that that's showing. But then we do actually check invalid and check collisions, though that's only checking collisions on layer 11. And uh, then we have the custom tile data to just make sure that um, we are building on tiles that are marked buildable. And if you were wondering how you take the custom data layer and you actually assign it to your tiles, you would go to tile set with the tile map open. You go to paint, you select the property. So we have the custom data buildable. If we zoom in here, you can see the Boolean value of each tile. So these ones are all marked true as buildable and the ones below here, the beneath ground are not buildable. So it can really be as simple as that if you just use Booleans, which probably I would stick with for most cases and you just mark whichever tiles you want to be buildable. If you want to make it a little bit more complicated, you could make uh, tiles marked ground and buildable, and then you could make walls marked walls and buildable if you want to make sure that you're only building on the wall or the ceiling. But as an alternative to that, you can just simply have that placement check be uh, on the left and the right, and then kind of by default, it's checking walls, not the floor anyway. So you might not even need that property. So that basically, in a nutshell, is the main changes, being able to place objects in a platformer game with the grid building plugin. Of course, it still works perfectly well for top-down, as it was originally designed for. 
Um, you can find it on Itch, Ko-Fi, and Patreon if you want to go ahead and download it and pick it up. And until my next tutorial video on the Grid Builder plugin or any other Godot content, thanks for watching to the end. I've been Chris, and I will see you guys in my future video content.